Live from the Mid-South Forestry Equipment Show, Deep South's premier forestry show. It is on today. As a matter of fact, the gates open at 8 o'clock this morning. It is our privilege and our pleasure to inform uh, every square inch of Mississippi that this thing is here. It's been here. It is big. And for people who are looking for something that's a little bit off kilter that you haven't probably thought about before doing, the kids will enjoy it. Dad's going to enjoy it. And uh, there's food and everything else. So uh, the location is right outside Starkville. You can't miss it on 25 when you come mm -hmm. in. That's right. And the, the president of the World Series champion, Mississippi State Bulldogs, is with us. And I haven't seen him in a while. That's President Mark Keenum. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Paul. Thank it you is, for having it me. It is a pleasure seeing you. And, uh, and as I mentioned before, I say I think people like to hear this, the campus looks beautiful. Thank you, Paul. There's We're, a lot of work going on to get it that way. Well, that's, you know, the first appearance when people visit our yes. campus, we want them to come away with that wow effect. That they, that, wow, that is a beautiful campus, and we take great pride in that. So I, I'm glad you noticed. Yeah. Well, I've got to ask you this, though. Uh, and people don't understand the after effects and the, the ancillary things that happen as far as winning a world <laughs> championship or a national championship championship like that is big deal and and just to put that in perspective it's huge I, i'll just tell you you know uh, i can't i can't emphasize how big it is for not only our university but for the entire state mm -hmm. our baseball program is storied it has long tradition and it just validates who we are as a major major college baseball program and one thing interesting paul immediately after our victory uh, fanatics indicated that Mississippi State University had an all-time record sale of College World Series merchandise within 24 hours. Yeah. And then they went on to say after just three days that Mississippi State fans bought more merchandise from our championship than the previous three champions combined within just the first 72 hours. This had a huge impact on just our licensing <laughs> revenues yeah, on yeah. our campus. I, can imagine. I mean, our fans, uh, and then to see them in Omaha, the, the thousands upon thousands of fans, I mean, the, the stadium holds about 24,000. I can tell you that in that last series, we had over 20,000 Mississippi State people there uh, in Omaha, and it, it felt That's like great. a home game to us. It was wonderful. Seems like, and I, I don't think I'm misreading this, it was this, I don't care who you were, what, uh, what jersey you were, what school you were in, where your affiliation is, everybody was proud. Yes. It, the, the work that goes into it, the, the, the dedication mm -hmm. uh, of the, not only the team but the coaches, it, it takes a lot to do that. It's not easy to win a national championship. I, I visited with my good friend Glenn Boyce, and his uh, uh, women on the golf team had yep. just won the national championship in women's golf, and I was complimenting him on that, and, and I commented on that in one of our IHL board meetings and I to all the, the trustees, and I said, let me tell you what, congratulations, uh, Chancellor Boyce. It is hard to win your nation's national championship in whatever sport it is, so well-deserved. And for us then just a few weeks later to do it in baseball, it, it's tremendous. It is. Do you get a chance to talk to the coaches that much? I mean, I, I understand that they're busy, oh, but yeah. Mike, Mike Leach, when you sit down and talk to him, do you, do you come away wondering what the conversation was about? <laughs> Well, usually when I'm talking to coaches, I have a purpose to talk to them yeah. about something. Yeah. Uh, and he's very attentive when I talk to him, and, and we have very good <laughs> conversations, and he acknowledges in whatever it is I'm sharing with him. In fact, I'm meeting with all the coaches next week. I do it every year. I talk to them about the importance of complying with all the rules, the NCAA rules, the SEC rules, and we've got to be fair and play fair. And I hope and I hold my coaches accountable to abiding by the rules. So it's kind of my do right speech that yeah. I give to them every year. While we have the audience of, of, of the entire network here for a moment or two, any big news as far as state's concerned? Building projects, new things, things happening? Oh well, we're growing. Uh, our campus is growing. We're very pleased about our enrollment this year. We're looking at having another our seventh consecutive record enrollment at Mississippi State. We're very excited about that. 
And yes, if you come on campus, if you said you were on campus, there's yeah. quite a bit of construction going on right now. We're about to dedicate a new uh, civil engineering building, the rural engineering building. We're building a new music building right now on our campus, and we're developing plans to build a new supercomputer center on our campus because our current supercomputing center is full of supercomputers. We're thankful to the legislature for their support in allowing us to build this uh, new massive data center. And, when, and the next big project is a new kinesiology building uh, and then a new building for our College of Architecture, Art, and Design. So, yeah, we've got a lot going on and a lot on the drawing board for continued expansion on our campus. I don't think people understand how, how uh, impactful that is to research grants and everything mm -hmm. going on that touch everybody across the, not only the, the state, but in the nation. Well, you know, Mississippi State is the research university for mm -hmm. Mississippi. We generate more than half of all the research, more than a quarter of a billion dollars a year. We're the only top 100 research university in the state, and I'm proud of what we're doing and leading the, leading the way in cutting-edge research technology. Doing this a long time, I know that when, and behind the scenes, and people don't hear a lot about the, this, but when you hear a new business comes in, whether it's drones or some technology or whatever it happens to be, you can, you can almost be assured that somewhere in that uh, to where you got to that point, Mississippi State had some involvement in it. Well, we work hand in glove with our governor and governors before our current governor and MDA. And when we're talking to potential industries that are looking at Mississippi to locate, more times than not, either I or somebody from our university yeah. is sitting at the table and talking with them about how we can serve them and what we can bring to bear to help make them successful. Switching over to, to this big uh, function here, mm. um, people don't realize how much Mississippi State is involved in the agricultural part oh. of forestry. They, they never oh. think about that. Well, I mean, we're, we're, we're a major player in forestry, and forestry is one of our largest industries yeah. in the state. Just the, the timber value at the farm gate is over a billion dollars. But when you put it through the mills and all the forest products, it's a $13 billion impact a year on our state economy. And then when you bring in the wildlife aspect of hunting and fishing, right. you can add another $2 billion. So combined, forestry and wildlife is over $15 billion a year to our state economy. It is huge. And we're very fortunate to have such a timber-rich state yep. that affords 61,000 Mississippians have a job in this many? state. 61,000 because of forestry and the timber industry. I do. Um, we were talking about a little bit earlier, and I was thinking about Alex Littlejohn when he was on with me from uh, Ducks Unlimited and, and some of these, not from the conservative uh, group. Uh, and also had the uh, uh, Ducks Unlimited people on. But we were talking about uh, a lot of that land is private, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and this kind of puts it in perspective over 77% of the That's forestry. Right. So where you have forestry and land, you have that asset with nature's conservancy. Uh, and, and again, another reason for that, uh, the trust fund, and uh, uh, we'll talk more about that on, at a later date. but. Uh, they do kind of work hand in hand. Well, wildlife and fishery, and our wildlife and fishery department at Mississippi State are producing professionals to go and work and serve because it's, it's, it's helping landowners yeah. better manage for wildlife and for their fisheries, but it's also big business yep. for our state. Yeah. Well, and you also talk about, like you talk about cotton and you, you, the extension service and all of this and the boll weevil, but you have something called the pine beetle. <laughs> well, and that's right. And it then can you be call very the research for right. a university to solve things like that. Well, where we're sitting right here on the, the John Starr Memorial Forest, you're, you're on our campus yeah. right now. There's, there's 8,500 acres right here, and it is a massive if you will, research laboratory for our students to understand how to properly manage for major forest not, and not, wildlife. Can you spend one more segment with me? Yeah, sure. One more segment with the um, yeah. with the president of the Mississippi State. <laughs> Mid-South Forestry Equipment Show, Deep South's premier forestry show. Uh, but forestry is a big deal at Mississippi State, and, and it's a big deal in the state. It's huge. Like I said, I mean, it's... Combined with wildlife, it's a $15 billion a year industry. 61,000 Mississippians are employed in the forestry industry and wildlife 
Uh, so it's it's very important to our economy, and and then being here in the Star Forest uh, on our Mississippi State yeah. campus, this is I was mentioning earlier. This is a major research laboratory to serve us in research, to serve the needs of our timber industry, our forestry industry. And it's a great laboratory for teaching future foresters to be right here, right here at our campus, to be able to help manage this massive forest that we have here. And oh, by the way, this is one of just 33 forests across the state that we own and manage. We have a lot of, of uh, landowners who want to make a donation to Mississippi State University yep. and they'll give us their land with an agreement that we'll manage it for perpetuity. We'll take the, the proceeds from timber sales and apply them to scholarships for students How about or, that? or to faculty support. And it's a great way to make a gift to the university that's a perpetual giving gift uh, and, and that land that they may dearly love will always be managed and manicured by our professionals. And again, we have over 30, we have 33 different forests across the state. And um, they're called the Bulldog Forest. And so it's really beneficial for us to, to have access for research and for our students, but it benefits us as yeah. a university. The, the ability to grow trees over, and nobody talks about this, the ability to grow a tree faster, you wouldn't think that, but over the last 50 or 60 years, genetic engineering and everything else, that's a part of where it is. Uh, it's coming from the universities and, there's, and those uh, think tanks. It, no doubt. You, you want to you grow, obviously, <clears throat> when, you're, when you're growing uh, timber for revenue. You want to grow fast, but you also have got to have a good staple tree there yeah. that has good, solid fiber to it for its use. Sometimes some of the varieties grow so fast the trees are not very good. And so, so the quality, so the quality has to be part of that as well. And, and so research is a big part of how you can have a fast growing, sturdy tree mm -hmm. that meets industry needs. Well, the other thing, too, and, and we see that in the wildfires in California, if loggers were able to do, get in, mm. get out, and do what needs to be done, no doubt. in many, many cases, you wouldn't have the catastrophes you no. have in some of these places. Well, in some places of the country, when you have trees that just naturally die and they yeah. fall over, and, and they're not allowed, from an environmental standpoint, to go in and clean out that underbrush of debris, and... And unfortunately, that becomes fuel for these yep. some of these major fires. And you build a two or three million dollar home in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. Sooner, sooner right. or later, it's not going to be good. It, br it breaks your heart when yep. you see all these terrible fires. What's next as far as farming is concerned, or or agriculture in, in the state itself? Is uh, the market still look pretty good? Yeah, markets are markets are, are stable, and of course, it fluctuates from year to year. This this COVID virus has had a big impact yeah. on a lot of things in the in the in the supply chain. Unfortunately, you've got people in the livestock industry who are getting lower prices for their livestock. Mm -hmm. But at the at the retail market, when you and I go and buy that packaged piece of beef, it's sky high. Even hamburger meat, meat products are going. It's all through the the supply chain that's being disrupted, the labor supply that's being disrupted. So, the, unfortunately, the the poor farmer who's producing at the farm gate is the one that gets the squeeze. And, and then we as consumers on the receiving end, we get the squeeze and the higher prices. And, and, and that trickles back to loggers just as well as uh, dairy farmers. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So uh, it applied to the same same. Well, you, you were hoping that, much like the university, saying, that, all right, we're going to get back to normal, but uh, there are some things going to take a while. Well, you know, it is. And, you know, Mississippi State, we've got our COVID uh, uh, compliance components mm -hmm. that we put in place to protect our students, our faculty, and and we're managing, Paul. We're managing. It's it's not perfect. We wear face coverings when we're indoors. That's a, something that Dr. Thomas Dobbs with the Mississippi yep. State uh, Public Health uh, directed us to do. Um, our our governing board has decided, and they voted and decided that we didn't. We as universities in the state should not be required to mandate vaccinations and that was a decision that our board made and so we're complying with that as well but as far as doing all we can for protocols to protect the interest of our campus we're doing everything we can and, and yeah, think about this uh, we, we of course survey our students and our employees and I'm pleased to report that 78% uh, 
of our Mississippi State employees here on our Starkville campus are vaccinated, and 56% of our students are, are vaccinated. vaccinated. Well, that's higher than some places. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we are doing everything we can to keep that number going up. We have vaccination clinics across our campus, and we are seeing more and more and more of our students take advantage of, and we provide all types of incentives for students and employees to get vaccinated. And I think that's helping keep our COVID numbers down. Yeah. And, and to give you a comparison, um, as of yesterday, we had 114 students that were in either isolation or quarantine. Well, this time one year ago, we had 311 students in isolation or quarantine. So, yeah, I'm not happy with the 114, but I'm, I'm a lot happy, more happy with it than having 300 plus students like we were last year. I think fact that we have such a large uh, number of students, employees who are already vaccinated, plus natural immunity yep. from those who have already contracted the virus, is helping to keep our numbers relatively low. Do you do data, some data gathering on those that the ones who are in quarantine are not vaccinated for the most part? Uh, well, if they're in quarantine, we know they're not vaccinated. They're not vaccinated. Because if you... It's not, it's not a breakthrough... Um, because we know if you if, if you're vaccinated, yeah. you don't have to quarantine. Oh, is that right? That's correct. So they don't have it. They haven't contracted it yet, but they're just quarantined for safety purposes. That's correct. Oh, I got you. I got you. Uh, it, <laughs> a legislative session will be here before you know it. Anything that you want to say uh, <laughs> that, that, that uh, is first well, and foremost on your mind? Absolutely. They've got a billion-dollar <laughs> surplus that they're starting this year with, yes. over a billion dollars. Yeah. And they started the month of July with over $50 million and over their, their estimate. I haven't seen the August numbers yet, but it looks really good from where we're coming into this fiscal mm -hmm. year. and. You know, our top priority is always support for our faculty and our staff for pay raises. And so we can continue to do all the important work that we do to serve the needs of our state. And uh, we're going to keep talking with our leaders about that. And they are, like I said, they've got some money to work with this year. The Mississippi State Bulldogs on the road headed north. Yeah, play in Memphis. That's right. And um, that game is on tomorrow. What time? 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock uh, tomorrow. Uh, ought to be a good game. They looked pretty good last week. Well, we looked better than we did the week yeah. before. Yeah. I was very pleased. I love, I love, uh, <laughs> and I mentioned on the air, it's kind of a weird uh, uh, juxtaposition between Mike Leach and uh, some of his wisdom, trying to pass on wisdom to a guy named Will Rogers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, yeah. That dynamics, right. dynamics there is, yeah, is something a, to behold. He has so, a great name. Look forward to it uh, for uh, tomorrow. Sir, as always, it is a pleasure. This is a big one. Uh, what do you think people ought to see here when they come? Oh, um, just all this amazing equipment that's here, state of the art. You know, if you're if you're if you do anything in the forestry industry, and you know, this is a place to come. Make great contacts. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there are a lot of dealers here. They want to sell you one of these nice big pieces of equipment. Yeah. But you know, it's it's a good thing. And they'll deliver it too. I'm sure. Yeah, oh, they absolutely <laughs> will. Well, here's the other thing. And I was talking to uh, Tedrick about this a little bit earlier. Those trees are right on the border of being too big to cut. Well, some, <laughs> some are. That's he right. said that they could handle it with no problem, but uh, for the average person, they wouldn't be cutting something quite that big. Yeah, well, they but can. But there are some massive ones. There's there. some massive equipment that can do about anything you want to do. It is amazing. We were talking about it earlier. We said that uh, Lewis and Clark, if they had that equipment, they'd be driving <laughs> on 55 or interstate going uh, <laughs> going. <laughs> going out west. But out west. It is incredible. You know, the other thing, too, and I was talking to Cecil about this, and he said the guy from uh, Swamp Loggers, hmm. uh, the reality series that was on for a long time, usually came every year to this. Okay. He, he missed uh, this one because of uh, COVID, but he was talking about it. And, and I said to him, I said, you know, you get back in the middle of where they log on these logging roads. And that is a hostile environment. It is. It is just conducive of having an accident. Yeah. These guys have been working together, coordinate like a dance. And they step from the swap into a space capsule. Uh, it is amazing, the technology. It is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And, and it is a dangerous occupation. It is. Always good seeing you, sir. Well, thank you, Paul. You got it. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for being